What's up, guys? Welcome back <clears throat> to another video. Um, if you saw that I posted my other um, gubernatorial projection last night, uh, it was low quality, and I, uh, I I just was not proud of it, so I'm going to redo it. Uh, hopefully, this is better. I deleted my other one. Uh, it, 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 it had a 5 to 1 like to dislike ratio in only one comment, so I sense you guys weren't very impressed with it. So um, let's get started, but first... Uh, if you are uh, not subscribed, please hit the uh, subscribe button. If uh, you are not, um, or if you are subscribed, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. 119 subscribers already is insane. And yes, as promised, I know um, I'm 19 subscribers removed from the 100 subscriber special. <clears throat> um, but don't worry, I am going to be releasing the election night of Newsom versus Romney soon. The polls have closed. You all have voted. And the results are in. I just need to make the election night. So that's it. Now, I know you guys didn't uh, come here to talk to have me talk about subscribers and why you should subscribe to me and how the election is coming soon. But um, governor's races. So I think these are interesting because especially in 2020, redistricting happens. For example, uh, some of these states are getting a new congressional district. Um, Missouri is or sorry, West Virginia is losing one. North Carolina is gaining one. Uh, Montana is gaining one. This is going to be very interesting. So is it going to be, you know, um, in the ideal case, with the Democrats, you build a uh, district over here um, in the most liberal area of Montana or one of the stretches, you know, uh, like uh, from Missoula to Billings and then Helena in just a very skinny uh, line, which looks ugly, but uh, it would be very good news for the Democrats and it would be a free, uh, the free district in Montana and then and the rest would go uh, for the Republicans, which... Uh, that would be very interesting. So governors do have a process in that. Um, so is the state legislature. And I think most of these um, state legislatures, with the exception of Washington, Delaware, uh, Vermont, and New Hampshire, and maybe North Carolina, are going to be red. I mean, even when Steve Bullock was elected, they kept a red st um, state legislature in Montana. So, so let's look at In the state of New Hampshire, uh, let's look at the polls. Now, Andrew Valinsky is the nominee. He's an interesting candidate. He is a member of the New Hampshire State Council. Very respected guy. Uh, pretty popular, not super polarizing. Um, however, Chris Sinu is the incumbent. And as you can see here, he is very, very popular. Um, he There's really no reason to expect him to lose. He has been popular for his whole uh, tenure as governor. And in fact, he is in the most popular governors. He is number five here, um, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, he is certainly <clears throat> popular. Uh, Andrew Valinsky isn't super well-known. You know, um, he is respected, so he's not going to be polarizing. Uh, however, in the previous um, governor's race, uh, oops, I can't spell. There you go. So, in the previous governor's race, uh, Chris Nudu defeated Mo Molly Kelly uh, by a, a, a likely margin, by um, around uh, seven points. In, in 2016, he won... A very close race against Colin Van Ostern, Ostern. And then Maggie Haston, who's now a senator there, she won narrowly against Walt Havenstein in 2014. <clears throat> so, as you, as I'm sure you noticed, they have uh, two year gubernatorial terms. Um, uh, it's a cool factoid. And I think that this is going to be likely Republican. I mean, th they have a very popular incumbent. And yes, this is a presidential election year, and this is a Democratic leaning swing state. Uh, but, I mean, they are expected to keep, um, they're expected to keep him. I mean, Andrew Valinsky is a, a he's not polarizing, he's a, a respected guy, but he's not uh, ideal for the situation they're in. He needs someone who, who, who energizes voters, and unfortunately, that's not going to uh, happen in New Hampshire for the Democrats. Now, um, I do expect him to win this race with something like 8 to 10 points, and yeah. Now, moving on to Vermont, we have a very interesting race here because um, if I, there are polls for Vermont, but, uh, they're pretty inaccurate. Now, I do like to rely on polls a lot b because they are accurate. Uh, now, before we flip out and say, but 2016, uh, I just want to clear up something. In 2016, the polls got, uh, Ohio, right? They got, they got Florida, right? They were within the margin of error in Michigan and North Carolina, uh, in, in Pennsylvania, uh, and, the only state um, that that Donald Trump won that that he was not within the margin of error was Wisconsin. 
And however, I also want to say that uh, the polls showed Hillary Clinton behind in Colorado and Nevada, and she won both those states. Uh, they showed a much closer race in um, in uh, Virginia than actually was. They had it as a tilt Clinton. She won it by a likely margin. So yeah, it's not only uh, specifically, uh, you know, it it's not only biased or towards the Democrats. That's just not true. That's a, a false statement. Uh, so going back to this, uh, Holcomb is trailing, or not Rebecca Holcomb. She's she's the secretary. She's the secretary of education. She's going to lose, or she she lost the primary to, uh, I think David Zuckerman is his name. Yeah, he is the lieutenant governor of Vermont. And, uh, he is, uh, I mean, uh, he's gonna do pretty well. Obviously, he's not gonna lose by 35 points in, in a solid blue state in a presidential election year. I mean, this is a very blue state, but, um, Phil Scott is popular. He won by a pretty, uh, big margin. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, he won by a safe margin in 2018. And in 2016, he won, uh, by a likely margin, uh, Peter uh, Schumlin was the Democrat before, but he only won narrowly, and he was pretty popular, if I recall. So yeah, uh, in 2020, Phil Scott is going to be the nominee. Now, uh, now what's interesting is uh, that, um, oh, so Phil Scott is, so originally, last time I checked this Wikipedia page, he was not officially running, but he was still uh, getting donations, but he's now officially running. I have it as a lean, Dem or lean Republican, just because, you know, popular incumbent, uh, as you can see here, uh, Phil Scott, number four on that list. Uh, he has been over. Whoa, whoa that's. Um, he's been very popular for his whole tenure, except in 2018, I think he had a random, uh, bad quarter. But <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Uh, he's doing very well. Uh, with well, what's interesting is that he is a liberal Republican, meaning he's anti-Trump. Uh, and he is like a pro-choice, pro-LGBTQ rights Republican. Uh, very moderate. Uh, he's kind of like. He's a Larry Hogan type Republican, but what's interesting is that he is so approved of with Democrats. He he is more approved of with Democrats than with his own party, the Republican Party, and the Independents love him. So, uh, what does that mean? I think it's lean Republican. I I did consider up late, up, upgrading this to likely Republican, uh, but I I think that this could be kind of close. Uh, so yeah. Now moving on to Delaware, uh, there are no polls in Delaware, but it's it, it's it's going to be Democratic. Uh, the one thing of note uh, in Delaware is that John Carney has not officially declared, if I'm correct, because um, I'm pretty sure. Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that he has not declared yet. Uh, yeah, so he, he, he so John Carney is the incumbent governor, um, and so yeah, David Lamar Williams is a is a um, activist, so he is he has officially declared and is mounting a primary challenge, but. Even if uh, John Carney doesn't run, it's going to be David Lamar Williams. Like, whoever wins the Democratic nomination is is going to win that seat. Uh, okay, so now moving on to West Virginia. This is really interesting because Jim Justice, um, if I can find morning consul, Jim Justice is not popular at all. Uh, he is he has a negative one net approval rating as a Republican in West Virginia. Um, as you can see here, he has he is not super approved of. I mean. With independents, he's negative to polling horribly with Democrats, uh, pr pr pretty well with Republicans. Started off good as a Democrat, actually, because be because what's interesting is is West Virginia they love to elect conservative Democrats. I call them Joe Donnelly Democrats because they're Democrats that are pro life, maybe not uh, super liberal um, on an, on LGBTQ rights, uh, and not <clears throat> and kind of Joe Donnelly Democrats is what I call. Him. He he's a Donnelly Democrat. When he was first elected, he ran as a Donnelly Democrat and. Um, in West Virginia, they love Donnelly Democrats because they elected Joe Manchin to the U.S. Senate, and he's still there. He's very popular. Jay Rockefeller was a very popular senator. Um, he ran for Senate. Um, he retired in 2014, but, but when he ran in 2008, he won every single county. So, yeah. Uh, they also they, they um, elected Joe Manchin as their governor in the early 2000s. He's, he's now a senator. And, and they elected Jim Justice as their governor in and when he first started out in 2017, he was a Democrat, and he had a very high approval rating. But when he switched to the Republican Party, I think at the end of 2017, uh, it, it, it's it's been a um, rocky, uh, a rocky kind of, not a fun uh, show for him. So that's uh, essentially it. And yeah.
So I have to say, no, Democrats are not running anyone super strong. So I'm going to have this as likely Republican. I, I, like maybe in, in a best case scenario, th- they'd win West Virginia, uh, be some, being something like, or you would see maybe um, the Republicans not turning out for justice because they don't think he's a real Republican. Democrats um, turning out against him because he switched parties and because they're mad at him. And independents, who he's already not uh, doing uh, polling well with, turning against him. Now, North Carolina, I'm up. So I originally had this as the lean um, Democratic. I'm upgrading this for the Democrats to likely Democratic. And I do it for a few things. Um, there is some polling here. And yes, in case you haven't noticed, uh, there the polling is pretty lopsided in all of these uh, gubernatorial races. I mean, uh, but all the polling here has Cooper ahead by 11, 12, 18, 12, 15. Uh, show more polling. All ahead by double. 27, like, 20. Like, this is no joke. I mean, uh, he, Dan Forrest is not a strong candidate. He is probably the, the most right-wing person who's running for governor. Um, and he's the lieutenant governor. So, yes, he was elected to an office right, at a statewide level. However, in, in, in all likelihood, I don't think that he's going to win because Cooper is, is popular. Um, if you want to look at Roy Cooper, uh, his approval ratings, he has been um, over water, I guess, um, consistently, and he's pulling very well with independents, very well with Democrats, and pretty bad with, um, with Republicans, but that's okay, uh, and he's not in the top 10 most, uh, popular or unpopular, um, because, like, he's not the type of guy who's gonna, uh, be kind of a standout governor, he could run for president, in 2024, being from a swing state and being popular, but uh, I'm talking about the gubernatorial race in North Carolina right now, and he's going to win it in all likelihood. Okay, so Indiana is going to be safe Republican, and I say this with confidence because guess the Democrats do have a pretty good candidate there. Um, his, his name is Woody Myers. He is a physician. Um, I don't. Okay. Um, well, here's a Wikipedia page about him. Uh, oh, he was the health commissioner of New York City. Uh, he was a health commissioner in Indiana, and now he's running for governor. He's a physician, um, and he is, um, and he uh, is going to um, turn for governor. And he is, I think, he's a again, as I mentioned, he's a pretty strong candidate. However, Eric Holcomb uh, is not t- terribly unpopular. Yeah, he's not uh, super popular, but um, he's not terribly unpopular. In fact, he's like pretty popular actually. Now that I realize it. And I mean, in a, in a red state already in a presidential election year. And yes, Indiana did elect Joe Donnelly to the Senate uh, in 2012, but he lost in 2018. So in the midterms aren't looking good for the Democrats there either. It, in, this is a state that's trending to the right politically in a presidential election year. I, I don't see a pathway to victory for um, Woody Myers. Now, Missouri, I'm going to be upgrading. I originally had it as a tilt Republican. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it as lean Republican. Now, I think I was overestimating Nicole Galloway. Because, yes, she's a very, very strong candidate. However, the polling, which is very accurate, as I mentioned before, um, does not look good for Galloway. Trailing by uh, 13, 13 again, and uh, trailing by 8. So I think think it's going to be close to this. It'll be a lean margin. She'll lose by 4 or 5 points. Now, what's interesting is that uh, Mike Parson has never been elected uh, to this position. He is fairly popular. As I mentioned, as I as I mentioned, he's pulled pretty well with independence. So again, um, looking good for him. But but Galloway has has the distinction of winning a statewide race as a state auditor of Missouri. Mike Parson does not. Mike, Mike Parson he lost or sorry he he was the lieutenant governor under um, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name. Um, I'm for uh, it's. It was like Eric Greetens, I think. Eric Greetens. Uh, oh, yeah, they did a poll with him, Eric Greetens. So, yes. Uh, it's Eric Greetens. He resigned and Parson became governor. Nicole Galloway won a, a statewide election, I think, a few years ago. So, yeah, she has won a statewide election before. She's popular. She will increase Democratic voter turnout. She's young. But still, I think that she's going to lose to Parson, just because this being a red state, uh, it likely or safe red at, at the presidential level. Or depending on who you ask, if you ask, um, maybe uh, Red Eagle, he'll say it's safe, right? Um, if you ask me, or um, uh, say uh, election predictions, to, uh, to, sorry, if you ask me, 
what U.S. election prediction will say it's likely red. Either way, it's a red state, and this being a presidential election year, as I've already mentioned, um, and down ballot voting happening here, uh, it's going to be red in all likelihood by a lean margin. Now, um, also in the midterm, I forgot to mention that um, Claire McCaskill lost her seat there. So again, not looking good for uh, the Democrats in Missouri. But Galloway is a strong candidate, and she can make this competitive. Now, in North Dakota, uh, I think there is some polling here uh, on North Dakota. Uh, oh, they did a, a hypothetical with Heidi Heitkamp. Oh, right. So Heidi Heitkamp, if you don't know, she was a former senator there, a Democrat. She uh, lost by a likely margin in 2018 to Kevin Kramer. She, I don't think that she's going to run for governor. Uh, but we have a very popular incumbent. And when I say popular, I mean very popular. Doug Burgum uh, has been popular for his whole um, career as governor of North Dakota. I mean, he, uh, polling well with Democrats, polling well with independents, and polling very well with the Republican Party. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, in a pre- presidential election year, where there should be down ballot voting in North Dakota, looking good for Doug Burgum. Same thing with Utah. Uh, now, there is a interesting primary going on with the Republicans between Spencer Cox, uh, current, current, current lieutenant governor, and... Um, uh, John Huntsman Jr., the former governor. I think that Spencer Cox is going to win. I want if there is polling on Utah. Okay, there's not. But I think that, that that there was a poll actually that was released that had Cox ahead by a couple points. So whoever wins the Republican nomination is is, is going to win that seat as governor. Uh, I think it's going to be Spencer Cox. It could be John Huntsman Jr. because he has more name recognition. But either way, it's going to be Republican state. Now, Montana, I would go to next, but that's uh, way too interesting, so we're going to finish off with Montana. Now, Washington, I know that uh, these last three have kind of been boring, but don't worry, Montana's going to be very interesting. <clears throat> Washington is going to be Democratic. Uh, Jay Inslee, really no reason to believe that he is probably here. There is some polling. Uh, Tim Iman, I think, is going to be the nominee. Uh, when you look at uh, his polling, he's not doing well, but no one is doing well against Jay Inslee. Uh, Fortunato does the best, but Tim Iman, because I think, um, I read an article, but Tim Iman, he, he can, uh, I think he will do a pretty good job at increasing, um, the Republican turnout, uh, with, uh, with, uh, the Republicans, because I guess they live in a safe blue state, but he is very anti-lockdown. He spoke at a protest against the lockdown. So, uh, that could help him increase turnout, but also, Remember, the lockdown is pretty popular, especially in a liberal state. So I think Inslee is going to cruise to victory here. Lastly, Montana. So Montana is very interesting because uh, Steve Bullock is the current governor. He's a Democrat, and he's running for Senate. And I do expect him to win. However, this is a presidential election year. And I know I've mentioned that like 10 times. But uh, when you look at all this uh, data here, Steve Bullock won a governor's race in uh, 2016, uh, on the same ballot that, that Donald Trump was elected by 25 points in Montana, or 20 points, he won a governor's race in 2012 on the same ballot that Mitt Romney destroyed Barack Obama. In, in Barack Obama, he won a pretty big victory over Romney, but Romney uh, absolutely uh, kicked butt in, in, in Montana. So he's won in presidential election years before. So the Republicans, they do not have a strong candidate running. His name is Greg Gianforte. He was the former at-large congressman for Montana. Uh, however, he he has some scandals. He body slammed a uh, he body slammed a, a reporter at a press conference. I think, which is is uh, is, is not good for him. Uh, he has had some other scandals, which I'm not going to go into detail. Now, if Tim Fox, who is currently the Attorney General of, of Montana, Tim Fox is currently running for uh, 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 not president, I almost said president, governor of Montana. In the polling, he is trailing behind, um, if I can find a poll from Montana. He is trailing behind, uh, there's no polling on Montana, that's crazy. Uh, he is trailing behind, uh, uh, Tim Fox is trailing behind, uh, Mike Cooney, no, I just said Mike Cooney. Tim Fox is trailing behind Greg Gianforte by, like, double digits. Uh, so if I can find if there are polls, so here we go. All right. So Tim Fox, as I mentioned before, uh, he is the attorney general of Montana. <clears throat> uh, and then there is also, uh, Dr. Al, you know, I'm talking with him. And then there's Greg Gianforte. Uh, he, 
uh, is a former congressman, and uh, he is not very electable now. If I can find another, uh, sorry, okay, so this is not a good play, but essentially uh, there are three Republicans running. Um, I just want to find polling on this essentially. Uh, where? All right, I don't think there's going to be any polling. Um, all right. Oh, okay. There was a primary, which is interesting, and Cooney won against Whitley, um, um, Whitney Williams. And if I can, yeah. Okay. Where Gian Forte won? I I didn't. Uh, I wasn't aware that they'd held their primary. I I know I'm dumb, but he won, which all but secures the victory for Mike Cooney. Now I originally had this as Taylor Republican because I was like, oh, I don't see them having two Democratic senators and a Democratic governor. But when you think about it. They elected John Tester in 2012. They elected Steve Bullock twice uh, during presidential election years. And Cooney, he is he has held an elected office at a statewide level. He is the lieutenant governor. He's popular. Uh, Steve Bullock is popular. So I think that his popularity could carry over. Oh, actually, it's going to carry over. He's been very popular in independent. He's very popular. And now with the Republicans, he's not super unpopular. I mean, like, we see some Democrats who are insanely underwater with, like, negative 50 or negative 60 but uh he's very popular with democrats very popular with independents and with all voters he's plus 21 so good news for bullock in montana so uh yeah it's really interesting to see uh why um why uh, uh excuse me why the republicans are not going for tim fox because he is the strong candidate uh, to face cooney um but uh, yeah so Lewis and Clark County went for Tim Fox. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so that's essentially it. Now, no, no, what is interesting is that Missoula, which uh, Missoula is a city that has 70,000, 70, uh, 80,000 people, uh, along with it's the third biggest city behind Billings in Helena. Uh, Steve Bullock, he, he carried um, Missoula by a, a resounding margin in 2016 and 2012. I mean, uh, probably the most uh, progressive city in Montana. So he needs it uh, for... Uh, they get a chance uh, at victory. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So, as you can see, uh, it was a pretty close primary. But, uh, I mean, Cooney, he, he was the lieutenant governor, and I expected him to win the primary. I just didn't know it was being held. Uh, so, yes. Now, it is a little unsettling for Cooney to see that he lost in, in Missoula. But uh, he, won, he won in Helena. He won in Billings. So, uh, yeah, I, I expect him to, to narrowly carry this. It could flip red. But um, I think come come twenty twenty one, come oh my god, come twenty twenty one, we're going to see Mike Cooney as governor of Montana, and Steve Bullock and John Tester in the U.S. Senate, both uh, all three as Democrats. Now I don't know about the at large congressional race, but uh, I think that's going to stay red. And there's going to be redistricting in Montana, so uh, they're going to add a new uh, congressional district, which could it be a blue district or could it be a red district? All right, so that's essentially it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later. Election night coming out soon. Bye.